welcome everybody who is here today. We're very, very grateful for this nice audience and we have a really, really wonderful uh, number of people joining us. So thank you for taking your time out of your day to be here for this afternoon's Laconi POP program. My name is Jennifer Chaika. I am a member of the Laconi Governing Board and I am also a member of the POP team. The POP team covers programming, outreach and partnerships content for the Laconi audience of Illinois library staff. With me here today are Lev Kalmans, who is the POP president and Kate Niehoff, who is the POP past president. And we will all be behind the scenes throughout the event to make sure that we can answer your questions, help you with technical things. Um, as you have seen, we are recording today's program. Some people may not be able to attend and we'd love to give them this great information after the fact. We are encouraging you to use chat throughout the program. So as you are hearing information that inspires you, as questions come up, please do drop them in the chat and we will reserve approximately the last 15 minutes of the presentation to go ahead and answer those questions. Um, we also encourage you to look at laconi.net to see what else we have going on across all of our sections for library staff at every level and every department. Um, all of our programming right now is free to our members. So again, thank you for being here. And I'm very, very excited to tell you about today's event, which you have read about and chosen to attend because it's really, really great content. We're very lucky to have Elizabeth Doucette and Joyce Fail of Curtis Memorial Library here to share their deep experience about their recent brand refresh. They're gonna be helping us and our libraries of all sizes and budgets to understand why branding is important and how to get started with branding if you haven't already. So a little bit about our speakers. Elizabeth Doucette has been the executive director of Curtis Memorial Library in Brunswick, Maine since 2007. Previously, she was assistant director of the Lu Lucius Beebe Memorial Library in Wakefield, Massachusetts. She holds an MLS from Simmons College. She's the author of multiple great books, Creating Your Library Brand, What They Don't Teach You at Library School, New Routes to Library Success, and 100 Ideas to Inspire Smart Spaces and Creative Places. She's done many presentations to groups nationally and we're very lucky to have her here today. With Liz is Joyce Fail, starting her 10th year as Development and Marketing Manager at Curtis Memorial Library. She manages the annual fund, major gifts, business partnerships, events, grants, and Curtis contemporaries, social media, marketing, public relations, and special projects. It sounds like a fascinating and wonderful job. I'm actually quite impressed with all that you can do, Joyce. <laughs> She's also led the recent Brand Refresh project, which you're here to learn about today. So please welcome today, Elizabeth Doucette and Joyce Fail. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're thrilled to be here and to do this. I'm Liz Doucette. Uh, Joyce and I have a lot we're going to talk to you about, so I'm going to jump right into it. Um, we are going to talk first about creating a brand. If you're a library that hasn't done a brand and why sort of a very simple approach to how you can do that. And then if you do have a library brand, we're going to talk about some ways that you can look at your brand to decide if it needs to be refreshed. We just went through that process ourselves. And so Joyce is going to talk about that component of it. Um, we'll have some time at the end for questions. Uh, if you want to raise your hand through this, hopefully we can figure out how to answer questions if they come up. And let's take it away. So I'm gonna start with a really simple question. What is a brand really? Um, there are probably 90 million defini definitions out there about what a brand is. I've noticed over the years, I started doing this back in 1988, which is when I got my MBA in marketing. And I've noticed the definitions are getting more and more complicated and um, I'm not sure they need to be. Uh, Jeff Bezos has a definition that I really like, although mine's a little bit different from his. Maybe you should listen to him. Uh, he says your brand is what people say about you when you're out of the room, which I kind of like that. Um, my definition is a little bit different. Basically, I think a brand is anything that helps people remember who you are. And a brand is also probably most importantly 
a shorthand to a story about the product or service that you're looking at. So some of the things that make up a brand are a logo, the colors that go into it, uh, shapes, taglines, um, but really it goes back to, again, the most important part is the story about your product or service and what makes it unique. So let me show you. This is one of my favorite brands. <laughs> I have been buying Crest toothpaste since I was a little kid. Um, and probably a lot of you have been also. When you look at Crest, Crest is wonderful because it has such a strong, it is such a strong shorthand for its story. When I was a kid, I learned from my parents that Crest took good care of my teeth. If Crest fights cavities, it keeps your teeth strong. And then as you get a little bit older, the story expands a little bit that Crest is affordable, it's reputable, and it's familiar. So when I walk into a grocery store, all of that story is in the back of my head. And I know that Crest is going to meet my needs. So I walk up to the shelf. I don't have to think about any of it. I just grab my Crest and I walk away. Think about how powerful that is coming from essentially five letters, three colors, um, and some kind of unique uh, letters and shapes. It's pretty powerful. So if you can get your brand, your library brand, to the degree where people see it and have all that information that comes forward so quickly, it does a lot for you. So that, in a nutshell, is really why branding is an important tool. It tells a story very quickly, and people don't have to do a lot of thinking about what they're going to do. Twitter is another great brand, whether you love it or hate it. It is a very immediately recognizable brand. I think one of the things I always say to libraries when people struggle a little bit with, well, why is branding really important for a library? We certainly aren't the only game in town anymore when it comes to information, when it comes to books, when it comes to ideas, even when it comes to community. Um, there's a lot of players out there and we need to be in that story telling our story. Oops. I think everybody knows this. It's a really noisy world out there. I, when I first started doing this presentation, I went and looked up some statistics, and this is probably about five years ago. Um, and one of the things that came through was how many marketing messages we all see every day. And back then, the statistic was something like two to three thousand a, a day. Now they're saying that most Americans see anywhere between 4,000 and 10,000 marketing messages a day. So it really is a noisy world. And if we're not in that conversation, nobody's gonna hear us. The other thing I always say is that if we can't tell our own story, why should anybody else care? I don't know about you all, we have different um, funding methods for libraries in Maine. But every year I have to go talk to the town council in Brunswick to get my funding. And so it's really important that I can tell the story about what the library is doing in the community and not only tell it, but tell it passionately so that other people are as interested in it as I am. Um, this one, you probably know that branding, even though there's 90 million brands out there, it can help you cut through the clutter because the, re the core reason why is because it gives you a very clear, consistent message. If you know your story, then you're being clear about what you're providing and also what you're not providing. And it also talks about what makes your library unique in your community and why people should care about it, what makes it relevant. This um, goes back to the other slide, but it does help with funding and grant writing also. Grant writers love it if you have a very clear sense of um, this is who we are, this is what we do in our community, and this is what we provide. And uh, it is a powerful tool in that respect also. And this is something that sort of came as a sidebar to the whole branding process at the library, but we discovered over time that it really facilitates teamwork because within the library staff, because everybody understands what we're working toward, 
what our story is. If people from the community come in and want to talk about the library or some of the services we provide, our staff is educated and they know how to articulate what the brand positioning is and what we're trying to do. So it really does help have make sure all of the staff at the library are working together in terms of what we're talking about. So at the end of the day, really branding brings more people in your door. Um, it puts the message out about who we are, what we provide, and people can look at that quickly and say, yeah, that's, that's what I need, that's what I want. Um, and I think that that really is kind of the most powerful point about it in terms of uh, what it can do for you. So this is a slide that I put in my book that I wrote a long time ago now. And it is important only from one perspective that people say they do marketing in their library. And I think there's an awful lot of different things they mean by doing that. Um, what I always do is break marketing to two pieces, marketing strategy, which is planning, and branding is part of planning, and then marketing tactics and execution, which are all the ways you take that story and put it out there. When you look at this slide, hopefully what you can see is that the branding story is the most important part of this whole thing. So I'm going to keep talking about that. And hopefully if you don't leave with anything else today from my side of the presentation, you'll leave that I need to have a clear story about my library. So let's talk about the story. You need to be able to say in one to two sentences, what is your story? Why does your library matter to your community? And knowing that story and then telling that story everywhere will do a huge amount for making sure that your community is aware of who you are and where you're going. And I would say after COVID, it's even more important because we're all still a little bit struggling trying to figure out what that, you know, how do we convey that story in a post-COVID world? I'm not sure we're in a post-COVID world, but hopefully we're moving that way. So let's talk a little bit more about the story. The story is what Anything that says what makes your product or service or organization unique and why it might be interesting or helpful to the person who's looking at the story. So you can look at all three of these logos and the first two don't even have any words around them and you know what they are anyway. Again, it's like that Crest toothpaste story. Apple, when it first came out, its whole story was um, think different, you know, buy different technology, look for the innovation. And they've just continued to expand on that over time. Nike's story is, the, they call it the swoosh. Um, and it's because it's meant to connotate speed um, and motion. And it's inspired actually, I didn't know this, by the Greek goddess Nike. So that was, it's meant to represent her wings, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then on Volvo, if you say Volvo to people, usually the first thing they come back with is safety. Um, I was kind of intrigued how they put that into their logo. The, the little circle with the arrow thing, I don't even know what you call it. Um, it's an ancient symbol for iron and it was meant to indicate the strength and safety in the Volvo cars. So you can sort of see how different logos can reflect those stories over time. And stories are, why are stories more compelling than just like lists of information about this is who, you know, what the library provides? It's because stories have emotion in them. And the most powerful combination is when you can take facts and information and combine it with emotion into a story. Um, and the reason why apparently storytelling is so compelling is because it gets the people listening to um, drop their guard a little bit and hear and see more of what they're encountering. So that's why stories are powerful. I put up three logos here and I always try to do two that I like and one that I'm sort of so-so about. Um, I, I wish this is one of those times where if we had an audience, I'd be saying, so what do you think? Can you see the stories here? Hopefully you can see the story in the library 
2.0. I love that one. It's sort of all the energy and ideas bubbling around in the person's brain. Um, the Birmingham Public Library is a simpler story, but I think the idea there is that books can help ignite thinking and ideas and information and energy. I will say, I don't love the Portland Public Library logo. And this is right down the street from me, so I have to be a little careful about this, but Joyce and I have talked about this logo a lot of times, and I'm not sure what the story is there. Um, so that's a little bit, it, I tried to pull one out that was very obvious where you couldn't necessarily tell the story and then two where you could see the story. So when you're trying to figure out what that story is about your library, I think you need, some things you need to think about is what does your community need and how can the library help you meet those needs? So a couple of simple things are, for example, do people need a quiet, peaceful place for contemplation and study? We have a lot of people come in and say, they just want to be someplace quiet for a while. We have other people come in and say they are coming for rejuvenation. Um, they're looking for mental or physical or emotional rejuvenation. The difference is that when you're talking about those stories and what your community needs, again, you don't want a laundry list. You want to focus on not what the attributes um, are. So we have books, we have chairs, we have uh, a quiet space. You want to focus on what those attributes do for the person because it's much more compelling. So instead of saying we have quiet spaces, you could talk about, we have quiet spaces that give you time and energy for contemplation and rejuvenation. It's a little bit different. It's sort of taking it away from the list of to-dos and more into the what happens at the end of the story. So I'm just gonna do a very quick case study here so you can see um, sort of where we started from. This is what our library brand looked like in 2007. Uh, it was kind of all over the place. Um, there, were, there wasn't a whole lot of connection between these different pieces. I wouldn't have known this was the same library if I didn't work here. And let me go to the next page. Um, we really felt like we needed to, the issue was we need to clarify the message, the story. And the story that we wanted to go to was that our library is here to create community and be the heart of our town. And we do that by offering possibility for each person that uses the library. And the reason why that was our story is because in 2007, they started to close the Brunswick Naval Air Station base in Brunswick, which eliminated a whole lot of um, jobs in this area. And at the same time in 2008, there was obviously a huge um, uh, financial issue across the entire country and things were pretty tough in Maine. And so we were trying to sort of be here as a point of hope and possibility for the community. We wanted people to feel like if they came to the library, we could help empower them. And so community was critical. And we also, just from a design perspective, wanted to find a way to connect the different parts of the library, because if you go back to that, you can see it doesn't connect. Oops. So those are the kind of the key elements, community, possibility, optimism, and energy, and linking the traditional library with the transformational library. We're trying to move that a world and move into that world of possibility. So this is where we ended up in 2009, I think. Um, this was our brand. Uh, you can probably see that it's trying to show the different pieces of our community coming together into a whole, um, a world of possibility was our tagline. The other thing, and Joyce is gonna talk about this a little bit more, but it really focused on some of the elements within our building. So we're trying to tie together the traditional library with what we were trying to become, which was more transformational. 
This is a, at the top was the parent brand. And then you can see the sub brands. They're all made from tangrams. And it ties together, I think, visually so much better than it used to. And it uses color to define each of those sub brands. So for example, green is the Curtis Friends, the teens were orange. And then what we did is we amplified those colors in the building, um, expanding. So there are areas of the, the um, the kids area that used purple and the butterfly uh, on the wall. And we had the teens area had an orange wall. So once you get that initial brand developed, you wanna make sure that you tell that same story over and over and over and over again and over again. <laughs> so um, it's really important to be consistent and we've been doing it now for 13 years using this brand, being pretty consistency. And you might say again, why? Well, it's that whole thing of you want people to get that um, story immediately. You want the shorthand to come through. And the only way that happens is being consistent and using it everywhere the same way. So the other thing that you do is you look for opportunities where you can put that brand so that people start to see the brand and recognize that it's the libraries. Um, you even want them to get to the point where if they see the colors, they know it's the libraries. So I'm gonna show you just a couple of examples of how we did that. This is a video that we did at the beginning of this process. I will just mention at the very end there, I can't help myself. Curtis Library for three years was identified as the best library in the state of Maine by Down East Magazine. So we're kind of proud of that. That's what was at the end of that video. Um, this is Sarah Brown, who's one of the librarians. And uh, she was also the voice of the video that you just heard, but Look at that, she's got a vest with a logo on it. And behind her, you can see some of the 90 zillion different places we put our logo. Here's another example. This is really fun. Joyce came up with this. Um, we do a, a Valentine's Day mailing to our donors. I think that's what this was for. And if you look at either end of the list of M&Ms, you see our logo again. Uh, Curtis Library is all about food. <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, this was a cake that we provide, that we did at our um, the 16th anniversary of the library edition in 2015. And it was just fun to see the logo end up on a cake. We had one of the library staff went shopping one day and she saw this rug at Home Depot and wow, there was the Curtis logo all over the carpet. So she bought it for the library. We had bookmarks, we had magnets, we had thumb drives, we had uh, our name tags. It was just everywhere. This is a little free library that Curtis Library is the sponsor of. Uh, Joyce did this right after she got to Curtis and wow, there's the logo again. So putting that story everywhere, make sure you know the story first and then Think about 
when you come together with a story, how do you make sure it's genuine? You wanna make sure it's really reflecting who it is that you either are or want to be in your community and then be consistent in telling the story and put it out there everywhere. Um, I always try and put a few questions out there. Um, if you, again, haven't started this process, the real beginning starting point is think about why your library matters to your community and ask yourself what makes your library special or unique. If the library suddenly disappeared, what would be missing in your community? And what is the story that your library is living today? And is that the story that you want people to think about for tomorrow? And how do I want people to feel when they know their story? If you can start to answer these questions by talking to your board and your staff and your community, you are in the starting place for getting a brand going. Um, so having said that, however, I'm going to move on to the next slide um, and turn it over to my coworker, Joyce. Thank you, Liz, and hi, everybody. And I'm sorry, I know the video, uh, the audio was not working on the video, but I will, oh, no. <laughs> I will, I will put that in the chat and, and send it to Jennifer and make sure that you all get that as well. It, it was a montage of just um, wanting to just share you know, like we all do, we know that we're not just about books and at a time when we were, um, you know, I think that was done just before COVID and um, just again, reminding people of all the things that, that, that we do here. But, but leading into, you know, the question of to brand or not to rebrand and uh, to refresh or not to refresh, um, you know, we were, were, were at the point where, you know, even I, as a marketer and uh, PR person, was getting, I was guilty of starting to sort of lose some consistency with the brand. And um, we, we were at the point where, you know, we, we thought it was time to do a, um, not so much a, a brand, uh, a whole new brand, but sort of just a refresh. And coming out of, you know, we were all closed for so many months during COVID. Um, just open for curbside services. Um, we knew that we had a lot to do to kind of um, get folks interested back in coming into the library. And like many of us, we were able to take advantage of that time when we when the building was closed to do some refreshing in the library physically. Um, you know, we got some new staff. We updated a lot of spaces. Um, and so we thought it would be a good time to also think about a brand refresh. So here's some examples. You know, we we did prior to COVID, we did not have a self um, a pickup area where patrons could pick up their holds. And certainly because of COVID, this was something that we wanted to institute. We got some new self checkout machines. Um, we did. Fortunately, um, the town came forward and helped. Um, with uh, underwriting the cost of getting new carpeting in the library. I think we, this carpet, original carpet was as old as the building was at the time, about 23 years old. And I think we figured something like 7 million feet had crossed it in those 20 some odd years. So um, we added a lot of color pop in the carpeting. It really um, brightened things up. And the walls also um, carried that along. Um, this is our original 1904 building. It was repainted. Um, people started to notice that we had a maritime art collection <laughs> because the paintings just kind of popped off the walls before they were kind of a dull gray yellow. So um, it was nice to have that addition as well. Um, we got some uh, new furniture in the original 1904 building where the fireplace is and people started to come into that building. Um, uh, and so all these new additions and we, like everybody, you know, we, we noticed an increase in our digital services during COVID. Um, and as we started to reopen, we just thought it was a time, a great opportunity to refresh our brand, to to support the story of we're still here, we've we've done some amazing new things in the library, come back to the library and having a visual, um, 
a new fresh visual component to add to that story was, was really our goal. So um, some things to think about um, where the, what that might indicate, it might be time to refresh your brand. And the things that we looked at was, um, you know, is our logo flexible enough? Um, and by flexible, what I mean by that is, does it carry across all your platforms? Um, you know, now there are so many digital platforms that we use um, and is it a, a, a brand that translates well across all those platforms, meaning um, social media, um, uh, the website, print material. So all those things you wanna make sure that the brand um, has a strong visual image that it's not um, too fine line of a detail that it will not look well on printed on you know, book bags and things like that. Um, you wanna make sure, um, is your brand mes messaging Make sure it isn't, if your brand me messaging, sorry, isn't working or it doesn't reflect your values. Um, you know, um, you wanna make sure that, um, that for us, it was really important that our brand reflected um, our values of our core missions of community, sustainability, um, the communities that we that we serve are, are both sort of um, waterfront communities, and we want to make sure that our brand reflected that. Um, uh, think about um, is your brand identity is visually inconsistent. So um, you know you want to make sure that um, uh, if um, you don't have the um, I'm sorry, let me, let me move on to the next one. Make sure that your brand identity looks like, doesn't look like your competitions. Um, so there, as Liz pointed out, there's just so many more, um, uh, so much more visual competition out there. Um, you wanna make sure that, that yours stands out a little bit from other libraries and other community organizations that are doing the work that you do. And as your brand is expanding, um, is, is your, as your organization is expanding, for us, for instance, you know, we wanted to make sure that our brand would support our teen zone and our Curtis Contemporaries, which is a group that, a younger group that's getting involved in um, continuing the work of the library for the next generation of donors and supporters. So we want to make sure that the brand was able to support that as well. All right, so just as a reminder, this is kind of where we came from in our, um, our brand. Um, um, as Liz noted, um, this brand was created, um, the architectural piece of the library that you'll see in some of the photographs um, of this star image is, is something that we see throughout our library. We use, it, it was built into the original 1904 building in the form of windows. Um, and uh, we carried it through when we built the addition to the library with, um, uh, we carried onto the stacks, um, onto um, etched into the glass going up the stairs. So it's, and it's, a, it's sort of an image that um, tells our story and, and the community knows that. So it's something that we felt the community um, would, would sort of um, miss if it, if it was not there. And as Liz said, it sort of centers that all those little uh, triangles center into that middle piece, which is really where the library is in the community and where people feel um, the role of the library is, is really the heart of our community. So. So where to begin when you're thinking about rebranding? Um, if at all possible, it's wonderful if you can hire a professional designer. Um, not everybody has that option and we'll talk about that in a minute. We were fortunate that we were able to hire someone and we were doubly fortunate that we were able to hire someone who had created the prior brand, um, Robert Brochu, who was very familiar with um, you know, obviously creating the prior brand, but also the culture of our library because we had been in touch with him 
over the years to create some additional sub brands. And he really kept in touch and understood the culture of what a public library is. Um, and you can see here just some examples of his work that we put up. Certainly Tom's of Maine is a national brand and one not to compete with Crest, yes, but, um, <laughs> but one that you know is pretty familiar. Um, really beautiful classic designs here, um, very strong and bold. Um, and that's something that um, you know, we knew we wanted to continue with that. And so working with Robert, we, um, he, because he was so familiar with our work and what, what we were uh, looking to move forward with, he really kind of honed in on um, where we were and where we knew we wanted to be. So this was sort of one of his artist statements that he came for when, when we were helping, when we were doing a presentation to the board about our rebrand. Um, so it was over 10 years ago that our original um, logo brand was created. Um, and of course the library has evolved, has evolved in so many ways since then. Um, and really, when you walk through the doors, as we said, we had made all these updates and changes, you can really feel there's such a renewed energy. And you really keyed in on that energy. Um, um, and yet the brand was still the same. You know, it was still very kind of square and linear. Um, so that's something that he keyed in on right, right away. And here's our fun youth services staff hanging out with some some, uh, some of our paper mache animals in the, in the children's library. So moving forward, um, the, object, the objective really of doing a brand refresh was to update, um, so thanks Liz, to update the brand to better reflect what the library means to our community today. So where did we start with this process? Um, uh, we knew we wanted to, as I said, we wanted to retain some element of that star image that was such an important part of our architecture, um, literally built into the architecture. Um, we, we knew that it, we, we wanted to remove the tagline. The world of possibility was so important during that time frame that Liz mentioned when the, the base was closing and then the recession hit. And we really wanted to be that show the community that so much is available here and can happen here at the library with that tag. And we really succeeded, I think, in showing people that, that we were that place. Um, so we didn't feel like we needed that tagline anymore, but we still wanted to visually represent the library is still here in the heart of the community. Um, and as I mentioned, we are, uh, a coastal community. Um, we're surrounded by oceans and farms and working um, waterfronts. And so we had done some updates in the library with the color palettes, the, the rugs and um, some of the painting um, throughout the library. And we really wanted to sort of re reflect those blues and greens in, in our imagery. So. So we began with like many things we think about when we're um, sure many of you have gone through the exercise of sort of creating um, a list of words that describe your organization. And, and we, we began with the classic word bubble to sort of see um, the word map of sort of what, what our library um, represents to our community. Um, uh, and this is something that, that anyone can do, you know, um, just take a, put together a little Google poll and get some, some words so that what we all know internally is reflected through what our community thinks of us. We want to make sure that our, our, our visual images and our stories um, reflect that. So, and, you know, when you work with a graphic designer, um, there is somewhat of a science behind it, or they would, they would tell you that. And um, so one of the benefits of working with Robert was he had this very sort of scientific method of, of sort of honing down those, those words that we had come up with um, into sort of this visual graph. Um, and then he honed it down even further 
as we sort of keyed in on the key um, uh, uh, descriptors of what we wanted our, our new brand refresh to convey. Um, And so these are the first three initial designs that Robert came up with. So our um, original design is on the left-hand side to give us a, um, a base point. So you can see we, we got rid of the, um, um, of the tagline. Um, the first design um, you can see is, is, it retains some of the colors of the original. He called this one, the center of the community. So you can see he enlarged the center point and just, again, emphasizing how the library is the heart of the community. And he made the, um, the word Curtis stand out a little bit more because what the other thing, of course, that we find is that people just refer to us as Curtis or some people call us the Curtis, um, uh, both amongst the staff and the community, as a, as as though the Curtis is you know the destination versus the library is the destination. Um, great. We'll ask the, the the pros and cons of having a tagline. We'll get to that in one second. Thank you, Simon. Um, uh, and then, so that was sort of the first reiteration. The second reiteration, he called everyone is welcome. And so you can see he added some diverse colors into the main logo, um, made the word Curtis stand out even more, um, still the centerpiece, um, the heart of the community. And then the third reiteration, um, he called always evolving. So you can see he took that star design, you know, the first two were softened a little bit, the edges were softened a little bit. The third design, he sort of broke out that star a little bit um, to show that, you know, over time, over the last 13 years, like everything, the library has evolved, evolved and we're, we are always evolving to meet and reflect the needs of our community. Um, Liz, do you want to talk about the tagline a little bit? Because I know you were involved with the first um, the creation of that tagline. And the question was the pros and the cons of it. Yes, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I can't see chat from the screen. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think if you are starting out doing a brand, a tagline is really useful because it helps you uh, expand on your story a little bit. Uh, if you've been doing branding for quite a while, like we have, I think it's not as important a lot. What a lot of brands also do is they have um, just the brand with no tagline is what they call a parent brand. And you use that um, for organizational or institutional branding. So an example for us, and I think Joyce has a picture in here of it, is when you're putting something on your building or your um, advertising the library in the newspaper, you're talking about the institution. And then what you can do is add a tagline underneath it for a promotional event. So if you have a big once a year event, you might have a tagline under your brand that's, you know, supports that and talks to that story in a little bit more detail. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Um, I think at this point for us, we didn't need it and the story has changed for us. Um, it, again, it's where you are in that spectrum of evolving with your brand. Do you wanna to go to the next slide, Joyce? Sure, yeah. So we narrowed then down the designs. We, we decided that these were two designs that we liked. Um, we like the diversity of the colors and the boldness of the Curtis in the, in the design on the left. And we liked the, the diverse color palette um, and we liked the blues, but we really liked sort of the starburst and how that sort of uh, the, star, the, the star design was kind of like bursting out and stretching its arms and legs and, and showing the community, you know, we're continuing to evolve. Um, so what we ended up with, drum roll please, <laughs> is this. Um, so we, we love the, the, the starburst, but we wanted to re, sort of retain those blues, but add some more, um, more dimension to, um, uh, and diversity to the colors. 
Um, and we're so happy with it. Um, you know, people around the building, around the board, um, just instantly took to it. Um, uh, and so some of the highlights of this particular um, design, it did retain that star um, uh, architectural design that we were hoping it would. Um, the color palette was updated. The, um, the font of our name um, is much bolder. And again, across platforms is, stands out so much better. Um, we did remove that tagline um, because we did feel like we had, um, as Liz stated, sort of evolved past having to um, add that little extra definition that our community really understood um, our story. Um, and then um, we wanted to, um, uh, it was consistent with, we'll go to the next slide where you can see our sub-brands. Um, so um, again, we retained the colors of the prior um, branding that we had done, but um, particularly in the children's um, uh, sub-brands, you know, we used to have, um, I think three children's sub-brands sub that the triangles were formed into butterfly and um, dinosaur and um, the, the, the youth services team really felt like um, uh, that that spoke to a much younger audience and that this was sort of bridging that gap between the youth services and the teens, tweens, and then having the tween, teens have their own sub brand. So, um, so um, we were able to carry those colors consistently from the prior brand. So again, that was that familiarity, but, um, uh, but with the new refreshed, um, design. And again, when you work with a designer, the nice part of that is that, you know, they come up, they come up with these different, um, all of all the uh, templates and things that you need um, to, to re refresh your um, letterhead and your business cards and things like that. And this, and of course, and updating your all your digital platforms and you know, even working with a designer, we're still tweaking some things that, um, you know, because um, of resolutions and different things. So um, there's just so much to think about across all those different platforms now. So if at all possible, it, it really is wonderful to be able to work with someone who's going to stick with you through the project um, until you get it up and running. As I mentioned, the, um, you know, across the board, there was just um, and particularly through our board of directors, they really um, took to the to the new design. One of our board members said, oh, I could see that as a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, um, we sort of launched the brand um, refresh um, this winter in early March when we had a winter carnival. And we, so we made up some stickers and we made up some temporary tattoos and, um, uh, some other things. So we're just starting to, to launch the brand and get it out into the community. Um, of course, the staff are all wearing um, name tags that have been updated and, and vests, and we have ban uh, banners on the front of our building. And here you can really see, um, this is our original building um, built in 1904, where you can really see the architectural uh, element of that star design in the windows of the doors and um, how nicely the new brand um, sort of complements it um, as well. At our library, we're always thinking about sustainability as one of our cornerstones. And so when we took these old banners with our old uh, logo design off the building, um, we had worked with a sail maker um, who makes bags um, out of old sailcloth. And so Liz said, oh, why don't we ask them if they will make some bags out of our old banners? So um, these went, I think we, we posted them on social media and they were gone within a day. So <laughs> that was a fun thing to do. And so when you're thinking about, you know, again, how your brand conveys on different platforms at the time, I don't think we were thinking about you know, repurposing banners, but that's today. So, um, um, and again, even if you can't 
um, work with a designer, I would say put the message out there to your community um, that um, these people are so, I know in your communities, people are very fond of your library and it's amazing the, the, the creative community that's out there that may come forward to help you with your project. We were lucky um, to be able to work with someone we had worked with before. This is one of our newer staff members, Liz, she's our marketing development assistant. And when the brand came along, she also happens to be an, an artist on the side. And um, when we launched the new brand, she immediately took it and made it into sort of like this wallpaper and put it on her date book calendar. And um, we were all taken by how beautiful that looked. And we um, were actually playing around with, um, if you could go to the next slide, Liz. Um, uh, we have some light post banners along the sidewalk of our building here that we um, would like to put some banners up before um, summer, um, just again, to reinforce that brand. And this is something that we're, we're thinking about um, both to sort of, again, reinforce the brand and sub brands. Um, we're missing two of the colors on here, but they there are six colors all together in the in the sub brands and the major brand palette, and those also coincide with um, with the pride flag. And our library is sitting is involved with our local pride community um, and pride committee working towards some events for the month of June. And so, it might be just a way to sort of, you know convey the brand, convey that we're part of the pride community as well. So that's another way to think about how your brand um, can serve um, many different purposes um, for your library and in the community. So um, if you're thinking about a brand refresh, some place to start um, is to really think about the easy fixes first. So it may not be that you need a complete um, rebrand or even a refresh, or maybe a refresh is simply just, um, you know, updating some colors, um, removing some elements, adding some elements. Um, again, some of these things can be done, you know, internally with folks in your staff who are creative and can add some of those elements. Um, so think about looking across, I always like to do sort of an audit first. It's something that we did. We put everything up on a big bulletin board and said, and sort of analyzed, you know, what's working, what is it, what had, what had gotten weak over the years in terms of how we were using the brand. Um, so definitely start there, uh, both across your print and your digital platforms. Um, it's an easy thing to do. You can do sort of an internal focus group um, and ask your staff. <clears throat> They're the ones that are talking to, you know, your constituents all day long. And, um, you know, I think that um, some simple questions, both, um, you know, through a poll or just through word of mouth, talking to people. Um, I love this example of, you know, one li library where they said, have the people thought that you know, our logo was a tree branch when it was actually an extended hand. So, you know, that's like, that's some confusion out there around your messaging and what you're trying to convey. If the graphic is too confusing and does not support your story whatsoever. So um, that's a simple place to, um, to start. And then, um, you know, thinking about rebranding or refreshing, um, uh, I think after doing those first two steps, you'll really have a sense of, of how, um, um, how deep you have to go into the project um, and whether it's something that you can do internally or um, get someone um, outside to help you. Um, so again, um, ask your creative community if you don't work with a designer, um, you know, put the word out there because there's a lot of good people out there um, uh, willing to do some some work for you as, as well. I think bold is beautiful. Um, you can see from our, our design that, um, you know, that there's not a lot of fine detail, um, thin lines. It's something that works really well across all our platforms. And then really engage your staff um, um, in helping you um, 
we're, we're always amazed how um, our staff and not even just our creative, you know, people on the marketing team or the development team. I mean, people come come forward, you know, um, I don't think we had an example of it here, but, um, you know, our building manager once came up with sort of a temporary winter graphic design that we used on some stickers and things. And it's just wonderful to see that kind of engagement from your staff and telling your story. Um, so um, that was the same person, by the way, who saw the rug with our logo on it and bought that's right. it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then one last thing I wanted to just mention is that um, having a brand guide and a style guide, um, you know, most designers that you work with will present you with something like this at the end of the project that has, um, you know, all your different color palettes and your, um, the, your fonts and your applications and your sub brands. So, um, um, you know, and there are examples of, of this. Um, yeah, we're happy to share our style guide with you. We can share that as well. Um, there are examples of, of, of this online. If you're working with someone who's maybe not a, um, you know, does sort of graphic design on the side, but someone that can help you. Um, and we're happy to share that um, as well. So, and we're happy to take more questions if anyone has them. And um, thank you very much. Liz and Joyce, that was an incredibly generous amount of information. I mean, you are clearly pros. You have brought so much knowledge to what you do in libraries. And um, it's great the way you have brought a marketing background to libraries and you've done everything so community focused, informed by community, informed by staff. You did a great job reiterating your goals of the project and what things are most important. So I hope every library here took something away that you can utilize even if you're not working with a designer. Um, but yeah, there have been, so there was a request for the style guide, which Joyce has shared. We can get that link um, and we can share that out with everybody that was a registrant to today's program. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also make sure we give everybody a link to the video so, so you can view the video again. With Sorry us. about that. I didn't know I couldn't hear it. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay, Liz. Don't worry. This, th these are the Zoom things that happen and it's fine. <laughs> Certainly you have that somewhere on your YouTube or your Vimeo and we'll get it to everybody. Um, does anybody, I, do we think it's okay, Liz, Joyce, to take about two questions? I know we're around sure. time and I know it is lunchtime, but since we're recording, we're happy to share that information out with everybody. Uh, you'll have the video to watch, to view the questions if you can't stick around for them. So does anybody have a question? If you would like to raise your hand, um, I can go ahead and I can unmute you so you can ask your question. And if nobody does, and you're just reeling in uh, the reeling, okay, we've got one question from Bronwyn, okay. So Hello, Bronwyn, can please. you hear me? We can, welcome. Great, thank you so much for this presentation. Such great information and you have a beautiful new refresh. Um, I'm just curious about how long did you work with the designer on this project? You wanna to talk to that, Joyce? Sure, I think we started the project, uh, we started talking with him the end of November and um, finally got together in January. I would say it was about a two month project where we were working back and forth from the start of collecting the information to, um, to actually de the deliverables and getting that style guide and all the materials. And um, uh, yeah, about two months. Our budget um, was I think $8,000. Um, to, to produce um, the, the brand refresh, the sub brand, and then all the collateral, collateral materials in terms of um, templates for what we didn't include as well here where we created templates, we used the Canva platform for doing internal posters and things like that. So he set up those for us. He set up a template for um, our e-newsletter. Um, of course, all the templates for our printable materials and also um, all the digital uh, 
platforms and worked with our um, web web designer to make sure that that worked okay. I will, I will also just jump in there and add, if you haven't done a brand before, the process will take you longer. Somebody mm -hmm. asked the question, how many people were involved in the decision of the final brand? Essentially this time around, it was Joyce and I were involved. The first time we did it, I was new library director and I think there were about 200 people involved <laughs> and my board was part of the process and it took probably four to five months to go through it. So again, it kind of depends on where you are in the evolution of doing this. Um, you want to get that buy-in the first time around. It makes the second time around very easy. And we had a board that was more, I would say more sophisticated, more involved in, you know, businesses that had been through this types of type of process. Not everybody, but a, a lot of people had. And, um, and also we did involve, I think the first, before we narrowed it down <clears throat> the first time we did involve the senior staff um, for some feedback on um, the sub brands and things like that. Thank There's you for being willing to share all of that. That's really, really thoughtful of you to, to go into that level of detail. Cause it is, it, 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 the budget component is an important one to pick people here um, and one that you probably want to plan for over time uh, as you're doing those first few steps that you can do before you decide if you're rebranding or refreshing. I, I will also add one other thing, which is if you're a small library and you don't have a spare $8,000 to go hire a graphic designer, which is totally understandable. Um, the library I came from in Massachusetts, we used somebody from the community who donated their services as a designer. So don't feel like you can't do this because you don't have the money. There's an awful lot of it that can be done at low or no cost. Now, having said that, if you have the money, get a pro because it's worth it. Excellent, and I can address Terry's question, which is, are we able to share this with other staff members? Yes, Terry, it will go to the Lacona YouTube page. So that's the link that you'll receive after the event. Um, Lev is gonna get that all cleaned up for us and posted probably within the next day or two. And we'll email everybody a link and you can absolutely share with your staff members. Um, that way you can go back and look at all the slides and all the great examples and all the great graphics that were shared. And your and photography is beautiful, Liz and Joyce, just beautiful photography. Do you have a staff photographer? Cause I was curious about how wonderful all your photos worked uh, that you used in the presentation. No, we mostly do it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, some of our photography, we get, again, people come and donate for us. It's wonderful. It's support for the library. Well, it's a beautiful building. You're clearly very well embedded in and tied to your community and congratulations on this, uh, on this refresh. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. I, I would also just, um, this is a small joke aside. I was at a meeting yesterday uh, with one of the board members who'd been through all of the branding materials. And she looked at me and she said, did you pick your glasses so that you were branded? Because <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but my glasses are exactly our brand colors. And I said, no, but you know, that's what you want. You want that kind of buy-in from your staff and your board, so. It's, um, I would also just add, Joyce and I are always happy to answer questions. We're happy to talk to people. I, you know, it, this is just part of what we consider to be part of our job is supporting the library community and doing this. So um, feel free to email us if you would like to chat about any of this. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. And thank you to everybody who was here. We had such a nice audience and we know that you'll share with your colleagues uh, when the video is available. So we hope that this information benefited you. We hope you'll get in touch with Liz and Joyce if you do have any questions. And we hope you take some inspiration and some uh, guidance away today. So thank you from everybody at Laconi and we hope to see you all again soon.